Hi, Steve here at blessedhopeforever.com. We're going to talk about something instead of 2 Corinthians uh, this Sunday. That's kind of been put on a back burner for this. Uh, it has to do with one of the most important dates in modern history, if you want to call it modern, 1897 to 2017. Rachel's two sons, Jacob and Esau, are still struggling for control. This is very timely. One out of every 30 verses in the New Testament mentions the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. First Zionist Congress, 1897, uh, Zionism seeks to establish a home in Palestine for the Jewish people, secured under public law. And this led to the modern state of Israel that we know today uh, in 1948. I believe Matthew 24 is... Uh, we're looking at the tail end of the beginning of sorrows, followed by two world wars, the Holocaust, uh, Isaiah 18, uh, re regional conflicts. Uh, we're headed toward the tribulation period. Uh, 1948, Israel gained its independence. The IDF was predicted in Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 10. Uh, the 9-11 that occurred, the war on terror, uh, sort of a precursor to Psalm 83. Isaiah 17, 9, the destruction of J Damascus. Ammon's made a desolate mound. That's Jordan. Uh, uh, they got to end the Palestinians, Jeremiah 49, 2. Uh, end Edom, Obadiah 1, verse 18. That's Jordan. Folks, man mankind has gone from seed to young plant with a soon harvest. God said man would only have 120 jubilee cycles, and then time is up. 40 jubilee cycles, uh, 2,000 years, that's the seed. 40 jubilee cycles, 2,000 years, that's a young, the young plant. And 40 jubilee cycles, 2,000 years, another three sets of 2,000 years. That's a total of 120 jubilees, 6,000 years harvest. Now, Christ said that the harvest is the end, the seed cycle ended in the judgment of the flood. The young plant cycle ended in judgment on the cross. The harvest cycle will end with the return of Christ, first for His church, then at His second coming. Now, I've, I've made a lot of videos about pre-trib, uh, Enoch being a type of the church, and Noah and his family, a type of Israel. Uh, Enoch walked with God, and wham, he was no more, because God took him, and that was pre-flood. Do you see the comparison there? Joseph, a type of the church, he took a Gentile bride before the seven-year famine. I've gone over a lot of these seven interesting seven numbers. Daniel was a type of the church. Uh, Shadrach, uh, Meshach, and, and Abednego, types of Israel, they go into the seven times hotter fiery furnace and they get saved in the midst of it. That's not us, that's the tribulation saints. They meet Jesus in the midst of the seven times hotter furnace and they get saved out of it just like Israel will come to a true saving knowledge of Jesus Christ in the midst of the seven-year tribulation. These are exciting times that we are living, folks. Of course, Daniel wasn't there. He was taken up and he exalted to a high position prior to the seven times hotter fiery furnace. We are getting close to the end, folks. We're at the end of the end of the end. I'll try to explain that as I go along here. Now, there's many of you out there that think nothing really occurred during the, at the Revelation 12 sign. Uh, you know, we did a, a, an in-depth analysis of the 23 September 2017 heavenly sign, uh, checking 7,000 years to find no comparable event. Uh, 6,200 years into the past, 1,200 years into the future, which is equivalent to man's entire history to prove that it has never occurred before, nor will it ever again. The sign meant something. There is a remarkable pattern here that, uh, that mirrors actually the mirrors creation week, uh, the 120 jubilees, uh, the last 120 years from 1897 to 2017. So the Revelation 12 sign, that we saw that, the, the 5778 Hebrew year, that was significant. The uh, Dead Sea Scrolls were made public 
in 2017. 2017, these numbers, folks, have real meaning, deep meaning. And running alongside the eclipse data is Trump, the first president indicted in U.S. history. Judah, Yehuda, was the ancestor of Jesus that came through Jacob and Leah. And according to classical literature, the uh, uh, Jewish literature, Judah was born on 15 Sivan. Well, Donald Trump was born on the exact same day, 15 Sivan. These are not coincidences, folks. America entered the First World War on April 7th, 1917. April 8, 2024, we've got the second eclipse that crosses America out 107 years later. 100 years later from that came the Revelation 12 sign in 2017. April 8, 1947, the largest sunspot ever recorded. It was an estimated 7 billion square miles. We see that number 7 everywhere. You jump ahead 77 years exact and you come to April 8, 2024, the U.S. being crossed out by this second eclipse. There is a 6,000, 1,000 year agenda of God totaling 7,000 years. Israel turned 70 in 2018. Abraham was born 1948 years after creation. Uh, he received the covenant in 2018, 2018 years after creation. These are not coincidences. In 67, Jerusalem was retaken. Add a jubilee, you come to 2017. September 23rd, the Neset passes a rev revolution that states Jerusalem is the capital. Okay, I think that was 1950. 1947 to 2017 is 70 years. And tell me, how could the Hebrew word Yahweh equal 2017 and Yahweh 777 in Jewish gematria and the word God in English gematria be 777? Is that a coincidence? And how could the surface temperature of the sun being 5778 Kelvin be a coincidence, which translates to 2017? How could the seven-year gap between Two major solar eclipses crossing the U.S. in 2017 and 2024 be a coincidence. Elijah knew he was going to be caught up. Noah knew when the flood was coming, but we're in the dark. Matthew 24, 36, the day nor the hour, no man knows but the Father. You know, that has strong and convincing ties to the verse before it, referring to the creation of the new heavens and the new earth. I believe we can know the time in which we're living. September 23rd, again, 1932, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is founded. How many Israeli casualties were there during the Six-Day War in 1967? I'll tell you, 777 exact. The Six-Day War to the year 2017, 50 years. That's a jubilee. In June of 1954, Eisenhower Congress he puts under God in the pledge, 70 years from that date brings us to 2024. Exactly 700 days after Trump is born, Israel becomes a nation again, May 14, 1948. Coincidence? Israel recaptured Jerusalem in 1967. Exactly seven years later, in 74, the Ayatollah Khomeini calls for an Islamic Republic in Iran. Seven years from Israel's rebirth to the rebirth of this new Islamic caliphate. 66 years after Israel becomes a nation, ISIS boldly declares the formation of a new caliphate. And six equals man. There are 10,385 Christ return verses in the Bible, all digits equal 17. In the year 1217, an ancient Jewish rabbi had a vision that outlined history from 1217 to 2017. A jubilee occurs every 50 years. He said that in his vision, Elijah in heaven told him to add six jubilees or 300 years from 1217 and the world would arrive at the year 1517, that the Turks would take Jerusalem, they did, Eight jubilees later, 400 years, and we would arrive at the year 1917. The British would take Jerusalem and set the Jews free. They did. It happened to the day, dearly beloved. It happened to the day. A British general flies a plane over Jerusalem. 
Uh, the Turks had never seen a plane before. They believed this was a sign from God and fled back to Turkey without firing a single shot. One jubilee later in 67, the Six-Day War would occur and the Jews would take Jerusalem. This is what he said, and this is what happened. King David was born 2854 Hebrew calendar, died 2924 Hebrew calendar. You add the, that up, that's 5778. There's 24, 23 days between those two eclipses, American eclipses. Strong's 24, 23 is Chava, meaning beast. We know that the 40, the number 40 in Scripture is, uh, means testing. It's a, it's a period of uh, probation, trial. Numbers are very important, very important. We, you know, we know it rained 40 days and 40 nights. The Israelites wandered in the desert 40 years. Uh, 40 was considered a generation. Moses was 40 years in Egypt. He was 40 years in the desert. Uh, Moses on Mount Sinai, 40 days and nights on two occasions. The uh, spies sent to investigate the promised land, 40 days. Jonah warned Nineveh, in 40 days thy destruction comes, and so on and so forth. You know, even Ezekiel laid on his right side for 40 days because of Judah's sins. And Elijah on Mount Horeb, 40 days without food or water. And Jesus, our Lord and Savior, tested for 40 days and nights before his ministry. And Jesus appeared for 40 days after his resurrection. Now there's other 40s. Judges served and kings ruled for 40 years. Egyptians spent 40 days embalming Jacob's body, Jacob, which represents Israel. So here's what I want to do. I want to put this picture, this graph, this chart I made up here on the screen. Just it's, I tried to keep it as simple as possible. It's not to scale. It appears that God has revealed a 120-year pattern of events uh, that reflects the 120 jubilees or the 6,000 years. 120 jubilees, that's 6,000 years. And then at the, at the tail end, coming at the tail end of this, we've got another 120 year pattern, 1897 to 2017, to the Revelation 12 sign. I do not believe, folks, that this is a coincidence, that we have a 120 year pattern contained within the overall 120 jubilee pattern at the end of this. I just don't think it's a coincidence. You might, I don't. This strongly suggests to me that the 6,000 years ended at 20, in 2017 at the Revelation 12 sign. Now, that may confuse a lot of people. It kind of did me at the beginning. I don't think that's unusual for God to do that and extend a grace period to us or a period of warning which from 2017 to the present, we're six years past the sign, and now I believe we may be looking at a seven-year warning after the sign, after this, these two patterns, which would put us into 2024, which is coming up soon. That's kind of the way I look at it. Now I'm gonna go over some of the details concerning why I believe this period is so, so, so important. 1897 to 2017 by looking at what happened during this period, which is unlike anything that's ever happened in the whole history of the world. Now, as you look at this chart that I'm putting up here, this is the where I've mapped out 1897 to 2017, that being that 120 jubilees, jubilees, okay? 120 jubilees. 50 times 120 equals 6,000. And I want you to notice at the left side of this chart how that there's a great significance to the, the year 1897, First Zionist Congress. This date in history, dearly beloved, was so significant, I can't even begin to st stress the importance of it. As I pointed out when I began this video, 
This was the precursor to Israel becoming a nation again. This is what kicked the whole thing off. And the guy that, that began this movement, this first Zionist Congress, I find it very interesting that many of, of the opposing Jews really thought that this was not going to work, that this, they were very negative about it. They, they didn't think it was going to work. In fact, they thought that this was going to cause the Jews more problems than they already had. So they were very skeptical about it. And many of these opposing parties or individuals really thought that the founder was a little demented. Uh, kind of got, were, they thought the, kid, the guy had gone off his rocker. Turns out he didn't. If you look at this chart, you're looking at how, starting at the top, it goes from 120, 110, 190, 80, all the way down to 10. Now, it's not that the decades, the, the, the individual 10-year uh, increments, it's not that, that, that's not where the importance lies. I'll, I'll try to explain that as I go along. But if we look at the 120, the first one, the 1897 to, to one, uh, 1897, you go 120 years, it's 2017. If you go 1897 to Obama's change in 2007, it's 110. So now we're going down in 10-year increments, 10-year 10, 10 uh, segments here. So we come down to the 100-year. Uh, that's Balfour Declaration 1917, another big date in Jewish history. Uh, we're looking at from that date in 1917, if you go 100 years, you come to 2017. Back to the 1897, 1897 first Zionist Congress to the first Intifada. Don't, don't let people mislead you like there's some of our generals, our U.S. Uh, top brass, you know, are talking in terms of, of another Intifada, a second Intifada. Folks, there's not going to be a, a second or third or anything else. This, uh, this in, Intifada. This is, uh, which, and, and by the way, I, when I was listening to the news the other night, I was listening to some of these Hamas people, uh, as well as some of the, even the U.S. Palestinian, pro-Palestinian protesters stand out on the street in New York and chant, long live the Intifada. So we're looking at, 1897 to the first Intifada, which occurred in 1987, that's 90 years. So now we're dropping down to 80 years. 80 years, it's from 1897 to the Camp David Accords, 80 years, that's 1977. Are you looking at the chart? Can you see this? 1977. From the 1947 partition of Palestine, Palestine into two states, 70 years to 2017. 1897, First Zionist Congress to Israel, keeping Gaza from Egypt. They basically, in a, it's a long story, but Israel in a nutshell basically told Egypt, uh, okay, we're going we're gonna to move back, but we're going to keep Gaza. Well, because they kept it, we've got now what we've got going on now. That's clear to see. So from the 1897 First Zionist Congress to Israel keeping Gaza from Egypt, that, that's the 60 years to 1957 when that occurred. Now we're looking at the Yom Kippur War in 73, 1973. If you go 50 years, that's the 2023. Most of you are aware of that now. When we drop down to 40 years, now we're looking at 1947 Israeli-Palestinian conflict. That's the, uh, the first so-called in, uh, intifada began uh, to 1987. So it began in 1987, 40 years, uh, 47 to 87. Now we drop down to the 30-year marker on the chart. The, the beginning of the Intifada Free Palestine in 1987. You go 30 years, that takes you to 2017. 
1947, partition of Palestine uh, to the Six-Day War, 20, 20 years. That's 1967. In 1947, Israel uh, to Israel taking Gaza, uh, as we looked at previously, uh, 1957. And so the whole point being, I, I'm absolutely convinced now more than I ever have been that when we look at Matthew 24 and Jesus, our Lord Jesus talking about the beginning of sorrows, birth pangs, which increased to the end. Those began in that most important day of 1897 before you or I ever arrived on the scene. We were born into not just the, uh, what you'd say, uh, let, me, let me try to explain this, all right? People talk about the last days all the time. They use that phrase. They throw it around a lot. Last days. We're in the last days. Steve, when do you think we're in the last days? Folks, we've been in the last days for 2,000 years. That is the last days. Now, whether you believe that or not, or knew that or not, that's the fact of the matter. We've been in the last days for the past 2,000 years. For us to say today that we are in the, 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 the last days is not exactly accurate. It's more accurate to say that we are at the end of the last days. But I'm going to take it one step further, folks. To be in the end of the last days, that would be 1897 to 2017. But to be beyond 2017, in the year 2023, we are at the end of the end of the end of the last days. I, or end of the end of, of, I believe I said that right, last days. I believe we're in a grace period. I believe we're in that seven-year warning. Six years has gone by. And now I can hear the questions from you folks. Right now, I can already hear. Well, all right, Steve, what are you going to say? What are you going to come back and say to us after we pass that seven-year marker, of warning marker? After we get past 2024. Let's say we go 14 years ahead. Another seven years after 2024, which would be what, 2031. Let's say, let's say we go to 20, then, then how can any of this be? Listen, folks, you're not going to change the fact that there was an 1897 program of God of 120 years from 1897 to the Revelation 12 sign, which many of you think now, I'm sure many of you do, or many out there have come to believe, was just a bunch of nonsense. It was not a, a bunch of nonsense. Folks, it was the Revelation 12 sign, not a Revelation 12 event. That's why nothing happened. It's, it's interesting. We, we call it a sign. Every one of us call it Revelation 12 sign, sign, sign. Okay? But we looked at it as an event, which was a big, big mistake. Because, you know, since nothing happened then, we, we tend, people, folks tend to just kind of go, go on about their business and forget about it. Listen, dearly beloved, I ain't never forgot about it and I never will. I do not believe with all the evidence that we've compiled and others have compiled over the years that that Revelation 12 sign was something that Wikipedia could throw up there as being some Harold Camping thing, okay? This occurred. It occurred and in the year 2017. And if you look at all these numbers, if you look at the significance of 1897, the significance of 2017, the significance of 2024 and beyond, if you look at the significance of the number 7, if you look at the significance of the number 50, of a jubilee, if you look at the significance of 40, and I can go on and on and on. I spent, I spent hours last night sifting through much of the data that we've accumulated since 2016. And much of it comes in to support this whole idea, which excites me beyond anything I could ever des describe to you. That 
God purposed that there would be a 120 year, and I'm not sure what you'd call it, segment of time at the end of the 6,000 years which that six, in which that 6,000 years was 120 jubilees. That number 120 is, I've never seen that number. I'm, I'm going to admit to you, I, I never really considered the 120 as being such a big number, the big number that it is. That number 120, folks, says it all. All right, now we can go back to Genesis and look at some of that. I postponed our study in 2 Corinthians this Sunday to put this out there. That's something I rarely do. I really consider the verse-by-verse -verse teaching supremely important. In fact, I'm going to admit, much more important than prophecy. But I felt like that this was needed to go out there. People need to see this. If it, if it gives you a little shot of adrenaline, great. All right, if it doesn't, that's okay too. I, I've got to tell you that we here at Blessed Hope Forever are beyond excited over the fact of, of where God has brought you and I and His people, the church, in this particular period of history where He's brought us since 2017. It's phenomenal. The 120 years of Genesis 6-3 is a 120 Jubilees prophecy. Uh, the Lord said, my spirit won't always strive with man for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. Now, many think that this is the time God gave the people of Noah's day to kind of clean up their act and be saved. But a closer study of some uh, key verses and uh, the, the use of just simple math, first grade arithmetic, quickly contradicts that view. People lived well beyond 120 years after the flood. I mean, Noah didn't preach for uh, 120 years as many teach uh, and falsely uh, assume. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day, a verse that almost every Christian can quote front, forwards, and backwards. Dearly beloved, the 120 years are not directly connected to the life of Noah since the scriptures only give a 100-year account of his life before the flood. They are more directly tied to Adam. In fact, the 120 jubilees count starts with Adam uh, in the creation. Uh, in Genesis 6-3, the word man is from the Hebrew Adam, which is Hebrews Strong's number 120. That almost leaves me speechless. So the verse is more likely referring to Adam since all mankind origin, uh, originated from Adam. And the 120 years is inclusive of all generations beginning with Adam. Now to explain the 120 jubilees and the millennial week concept, we need to look at the biblical pattern of sevens in the scriptures. We're, you know, I told you, sevens have a lot to do with this. Seven days of creation where we get our seven days of the week, the seventh day being the Sabbath, seventh day being set apart and sanctified. Genesis chapter 2 states that on the seventh day, God ended His work which He had made. He rested on the seventh day from all of His work which He had made. And most of you people know that. And so God blessed the seventh day and He sanctified it because that because, uh, uh, you know, he had rested from his work. This shows us a pattern of 6,000 years man, 1,000 years Christ, the millennial kingdom. Okay? Now, the next instance of biblical patterns or cycles involves a seven-year cycle where the seventh year, called the Shemitah in Hebrew, uh, means, you know, which means to release, the seven-year cycle is part of a larger cycle involving seven seven-year cycles. Uh, another way of explaining that is to count seven shemitas. Once the the uh, seventh of these seven seven-year cycles, these these seven shemitas is complete, 
This begins the 50th year, which is what is called a jubilee. Now then, the Bible is full, replete with examples where God uses patterns, where God used patterns of seven to complete his agenda. The number seven is symbolic of completion. So we count every millennium as a day. According to uh, biblical history, we're about to arrive at the end of the sixth day, or if we haven't already. That means we are on the, the sixth day of God's millennial week. Okay, if the pattern continues, uh, well, we're running out of time. I mean, the fact of, of the matter is, is that it probably won't, the pattern won't continue. Uh, but we will have a millennium of rest. The millennial week will be an exact copy of the seven days of creation, the seven days of the week. So how do we know if we've reached the end of the 6,000 years? The beginning date has always been elusive. Well, that's where the Jubilees and, and Noah's 120 count come in. You know, if you multiply 120 by 50, you get 6,000. So let's suppose that the 120 days that God was talking about in Genesis 6-3 are in fact 120 Jubilees that occur every 50 years, which uh, culminates with the you know 120th Jubilee. Well, it turns out that those calculations have been made. They've been figured out. They've worked out by some people uh, a lot smarter than we are. The uh, 119th Jubilee, I think, was calculated to have occurred in, in 1967 during the Six-Day War when Israel finally captured East Jerusalem and united the city under their control. So if we count uh, 50 years from 1967, we come to uh, the date of 2017, the year of the Revelation 12 sign. The final seven, uh, seventh seven-week cycle where the 120th Jubilee arrived on 2017. Now with the completion of 20 Jubilees, we complete one millennium or, or a day for, for the Creator as we read in 2 Peter. You know, remember, to God, a thousand years is just one day to Him. So here's where the pattern begins to come together. I've stated on numerous occasions, with, with each 1,000 years counting as a day and considering the patterns of sevens, it is no big stretch of the imagination to, to at least entertain the notion that perhaps maybe that that 6,000 years passes before a seventh millennium begins. The seventh day Sabbath pales in comparison to the Shemitah, the Shemitah pales in comparison to the Jubilee, and the Jubilee will definitely pale in comparison to the seventh millennial period of time, which is the uh, time period of Christ's reign on earth. It does appear to me, to this channel, that we, we reach the 6,000 years of biblical history and we reach the last jubilee in 2017. I believe that the date of the last jubilee of 67 is in sync with the Creator's calendar of events. I believe the one jubilee, the, the, uh, I believe the final jubilee, the 120th, ended in 2017. Once again, folks, I find it very remarkable that we, without question, unless we just close our mind, our eyes to this. That we're look, we've, we've been all along, we've been looking at a 120 Jubilee period, 6,000 years from creation to the Revelation 12 sign. That we're in a period of seven year, uh, you could call it a grace period, you could call it, you know, and I don't see any problem with there being a gap in between, you know, the 6,000 years running. Why did I ever believe or, or insist my, myself on believing that everything just had to come to a head at the end of the 6,000 years? I no longer believe that to be the case. That may sound odd, sound strange for me to suggest to you that we're past the 6,000 year mark. But that's what the evidence and that's what the facts seem to indicate. Now, how close do you think we are to our Lord's return? 
I love you all, I truly do. Share this as wide as possible. I've, I have never, very rarely, I may have in the beginning, but I stopped doing it. I, you know, I didn't want to end every video with uh, please or begin it with, you know, please click subscribe and, you know, and please share this as widely as possible. I've always left that up to the Lord to, to reach out and touch his people with anything I had to say that I didn't, I didn't feel like I had to do that. I didn't have to monetize videos any, at, at, at some, I mean, it's been years since we've ever monetized a video. We just de solely depend on viewer support. But why did I ever have to believe that the 6,000 years had to come to, in, to an end and something had to happen? Well, and maybe I'm not saying that right because something did happen at the end of, of the 6,000 years. It was the Revelation 12 sign, dearly beloved. This was not a coincidence. So I don't find it strange that we're in this, I don't know, what, what do you want to call it? Uh, period of uh, a holding pattern, if, if you will, all right? You could call it a seven-year warning. But what I want you to consider is the seriousness of this in spite of the fact it goes on to 2015 or 20, or, or 20, uh, uh, I don't know, 2030 or 2040, okay? It doesn't, it's not gonna change the fact that God did place a 120 year segment of time at the very tail end of what we see was a, a 120 year jubilee, 6,000 year pattern. And that's what I find remarkable. I wanted to pass that along. I love you all, I truly do. Keep looking up, rest in Him, let not your heart be troubled. Until next time, thanks for watching.